Hello and welcome once again to Covenant Child. I trust that you are blessed and as we roll down to the end of the year, I trust that you are enjoying the goodness of God. I have not posted a video, I think in about two weeks. Studies have kept me quite busy, um, but I'm hopefully going to be posting again and maybe around every two weeks um, going into the new year. But let's get into the word and I want to just bless you even as we near the celebration of the birth of Jesus. I want to focus, however, on his death and just look at who Jesus is. And as you've seen, I've entitled the message, Jesus the Veil. And so I want to start off by reading out of the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 26, verse 31, where Moses is getting instructions to do the tabernacle and to construct the tabernacle and the Lord says to him in verse 31 of Exodus 26 make a curtain of blue purple and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen with cherubim woven into it by a skilled worker and so Moses is given the instructions to do the tabernacle and as we've just read, he's instructed how to do the curtain or the veil. Now, briefly, just the tabernacle consisted of three sections. And this veil or curtain was to separate the Holy of Holies from the Holy Place. And the Holy of Holies represented, as we know, the most holy place, the place where God's presence, what we normally refer to as the Shekinah glory of God would be seen. And where the high priest, only the high priest, could go in once a year to make atonement for the sins of the people of Israel. And so this veil was a very important part of the tabernacle because it separated this part. Not even the priests could go in, only the high priest. And the veil consisted, as we just read, of four colors. Now, it's very important, you know, nothing in the Bible, as I'm studying the Bible more and more, nothing in the Bible is by chance. God has a perfect plan in everything, and everything which he puts there is by purpose and a reason. And so God could have said to Moses, make a veil. And Moses could have decided the colors himself. Or God could have said, make a veil of red, or make a veil of orange, or make a veil of brown. But God uses four specific colors. He mentions blue, purple, scarlet or red, and then the white linen. And so I want to quickly just go through these four colors and how they represent Jesus, because everything in the Old Testament was a shadow of what was to come in the New Testament. And so we look and he first talks about blue. There was to be blue in the veil. Blue speaks about heaven. And most Bible scholars mention that blue is the color of God. Because we see that blue is the color of the sky. It's the color of heaven. And Jesus came from heaven. And he is God. The blue speaks about the divine nature of God. And so even as we approach Christmas, which we know is not the actual date of his birth, but we celebrate him coming into the world. Once more, as we celebrate it, we know that he wasn't just an ordinary baby, but he came from God. Even though he was a baby, he was in human form, he was divine. And that's what the blue speaks about, the divine nature of Jesus. Purple was the second color that was mentioned. Purple, as we know, speaks about royalty. In most cases, even earthly kings and royal kings, they would use purple and wear purple robes. 
So purple speaks about royalty. It speaks about the fact that Jesus is royalty and that Jesus is the king. He's the king of kings. And also he came from the royal bloodline. We know that Jesus came from the line of David. That's why he was to be born in Bethlehem, because that was the house of David. And so Jesus came from the line of David, the tribe of Judah, because that was the tribe that all the kings would come from. And so Jesus is the king. And so the purple in the curtain represents the fact that Jesus is king. Even when he was being pushed around and beaten before he died in mocking it is told that the soldiers threw a purple robe on him they found a purple robe somewhere and threw it on him and mocked him and said oh well you say you're the king of the jews let's put a purple robe on you because they knew that purple was the color of kings then scarlet or red in the veil speaks as i'm sure you know about the blood sacrifice that jesus became the sacrifice for us he gave his life he died on the cross he was the lamb of god the red and then there was supposed to be white linen that was supposed to be used in the veil which speaks about the purity and the holiness because even though Jesus came in human form, we know that he was God, he was sinless, he lived a pure life. And so these four colors speak about some of the aspects of Jesus. That he's God, that he's divine, that he's the King of Kings, that he's the Lamb of God, the Red, that he's pure and he's holy. And so this veil hung there, dividing the Holy of Holies from the holy place. But then when he died, Mark 15, verse 37 to verse 38 says, With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When he died and he gave out his last breath, that curtain which represented him was torn in two. And very significant, as I said earlier on, everything in the Bible is put in a certain way. And it states that it doesn't just say the curtain was torn, but it says it was torn from top to bottom. God the Father tore that veil and opened the way for us to enter into the most holy presence of God. The most holy presence. He who was without sin, who was divine, who came from God, when he breathed his last breath, that curtain was torn. Why? Because the writer of the Hebrews uses this metaphor. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 and verse 20, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body the writer says here that that curtain was the body of jesus so when moses hung that curtain and the priests hung that curtain in the tabernacle i don't think they really knew everything that this was going to represent but that curtain represented the body of jesus christ and so when jesus died that curtain which is the body was torn as the brighter of the hebrew says opened up a new and living way that we can come into the presence of god 
everything of the veil was in Jesus. As he died, his body was broken and the veil was torn. And we come now in. You know, I was just listening today on the radio as people were talking about the conference in South Africa of the governing party, the ANC. And they were saying that some of the journalists, they were struggling to get access to the president. And so it's not easy to get access to the president. It's not easy to get access even to the mayor probably of our city. He would have to go through channels. But what a divine privilege we have that we have access to the King of Kings. We have access to the Lord of Lords. We have access to Jehovah, the one who created the universe, the God Almighty El Shaddai, Elohim. We have access to him through the blood of Jesus because the veil has been torn. The body of Jesus was broken for you and me to get access. And so Jesus, the sinless Son of God, that blue color, came from heaven and lived a holy life, the white, and became the sacrifice for us, the red, and now he is seated as the King of Kings, purple. And so I want to encourage us to take hold of that privilege. Many don't have that privilege. Many don't know the privilege. But come in and enjoy an intimate relationship with God. Because Jesus the veil has been torn and broken and there's access for you and me and there's acceptance for you and me just because of the blood and the body of Jesus Christ have a blessed week I trust you will have a blessed Christmas as you celebrate with friends or family and worship the King of Kings the Lord of Lords the Son of God the mighty counselor who has come to give us access to the Father. Shalom.